Hello and you're all very welcome along to Season 5, Episode 5 of the Champ.ie Podcast. Ireland's premier horse racing podcast in association with Boyle Sports, Gorham Park Racecourse and Syndicate Start Racing. Coming up on this week's show, Barry speaks to special guest JJ Slevin about seven-year-old Fast or Slow, his upcoming ride in the John Durkin Chase, and the lads look ahead to five key races at Haydock, Ascot, and the Punchestown Winter Festival, as well as giving their best bets for the weekend. At the last, open and clear from Thakur to Derry, and next to the inside is Lifetime Ambition. What better way to start Christmas week as Galapan Deschamps wins the John Durkin Memorial Punchestown Chase. On his return to action, exciting times lie ahead. If you haven't already, be sure, like this video and subscribe to the Champ.ie YouTube channel as it helps to get horse racing content out there to the wider audience. We look forward to reading all your weekend hashtag five cast selections in the comments below. Sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Boil Sports. Don't just bet. Choose wisely. And the white flag's raised and they're off. And running in the Lexus. It's not that time just yet. Episode number five of the season. And the Golden Groom is back with me to preview the weekend's race. Another festival run. And of course, we have Punchestown on the horizon. We'll be speaking to, well, we have spoken to our special guest, JJ Slevin, as well, ahead of the uh, weekend's action. And uh, of course, our show this week will be looking ahead to Haydock as well and Ascot in association with our proud sponsors, Gorham Park Racecourse. The. Um, Premier race course in the southeast of Ireland. Yes, this day, of course, the 25th. Booked the Friday off work, 25th of January. And, uh, of course, our betting partner, Boyle Sports and Syndicate Start Racing. It was great to have Jack Cantillon on the show last week. And, of course, he very kindly gave us, for chat that he followers, of course, 50 euro off your first share in racehorse ownership. Syndicate Start Racing and type, of course, into uh, the uh, checkout, the discount code CHAMP, all caps, and you could own a horse, of course, with uh, the likes of Willie Mullins, Gordon Elliott, Henry the Bromhead, Joseph O'Brien, John McConnell, Gavin Cromwell. The list goes on. And it was great to talk to Jack last week. But let's get on with the business, Ronan. We have uh, plenty uh, to discuss, of course, in what's going to be another fantastic weekend of uh, action. And the five cast generating lots of interest. We did have a winner two weeks ago. Five winners, 440 to one. It was Fire Capital. So congratulations once again. And this week... Of course, the five races, we're going to look at three at Haydock, uh, starting off with the Newton Novice Assertal Grade 2. Looks competitive. Uh, of course, the Betfair Chase, uh, the feature race on Saturday, race number three on the five cast. The Ascot Hurdle, Harry Cobden has chosen to go to Ascot over Haydock. And we have a feast of action at Punchestown. We're going to focus in on the John Durkin, but we've lots to discuss, Ronan, and what's going to be a busy weekend of race and action. Very much so. Uh, punches down, grade one action. Looking forward to that. Another festival. And obviously Ascot and Haydock as well. Uh, Betfair Chase. Uh, a lot more interesting than we were last talking about at Basel because it was looking like it was going to be a bit of a cut up kind of a Betfair Chase now. And we want, I know we only have a small field, but we have a nice little match there. Uh, so looking forward to getting stuck into that. Certainly is. And so obviously, Gorn Park membership, just to highlight, is available on the website for 2024. But if you do want to get those early bird tickets in uh, for Goff's Tiestes Day, well, of course, uh, all you have to do is scan the QR code and uh, get your tickets early for Tiestes Day. And just, it's so important, Roland, you need to book the Friday off work. Right, let's uh, kick on with our preview. The uh, 12.05 at Haydock on Saturday. Uh, it's a grade two event. And uh, some nice types have won it in the past. Paul Nichols won it last year with Timuris. This year, not so much stock. Of course, uh, Noel Feely's Racing Syndicate does have a uh, Camsinas in here who's 9-2. to two, But favourite at the moment, Bones Park. But our tracker horse, our first tracker horse on the road to Cheltenham is in here. Primos, I like it. What do you think? Yes, I like him as well. I like him as well. Basil, I thought he did nicely up at air. Um, a good race up at air. Uh, you don't always say those words, but uh, it looked like a, a decent enough maiden hurdle uh, for the time of year, etc. And I thought he was valued for more the, the, the five length winning margin that he won by. Um, I thought he was a kind of slightly awkward up the straight. Uh, and Steve McQueen was just a matter of keeping him straight and keeping him keeping his mind uh, busy enough that he'd go and do his job. And I thought he did it nicely. It was his first run on the track. Uh, of course, Lucinda Russell is starting to build up a nice little team of horses there and uh, absolutely deserving of so, considering she sent out a couple of national or grand national winners the last few years. 
Mm. Uh, this is a 150,000 point of point uh, horse uh, sold last April. Didn't win his point, but ran second in a couple of them and perfect start over hurdles. I, I prefer him to Bowen's Park now, who was quite impressive uh, when, when he won in his maiden hurdle, but he had a lot more experience uh, for it, of course, in the uh, grade two bumper there mm. uh, at, at Aintree last season. But the horse that beat him there, Florida Dreams, was actually in behind Primos. So on, on that sort of form line, I know it's different hurdles and bumpers, but the, I'm just making the case that Primos did a lot more air than, than Bowens Park did in his maiden hurdle win. So he'd be my marginal preference for the five cast uh, Primos for Lucinda Russell. Yeah, th- I have to I have to agree. Snap on that one as all eyes were on Florida Dreams. Well, I was quite excited about him going into the season as an office hurdle for Nicky, Nicky Richards. And um, I suppose at the winning line, you're kind of saying, what the hell is this thing? Um, Primos, very, very raw, as you mentioned, uh, quite straight, not the most straightforward individual, but was given a straightforward ride, if you like, by uh, on that occasion by Stephen Mulqueen. And typical sort of Westerner, not the finished article. Uh, I'd say he's a pretty headstrong individual, but uh, I thought he won with loads in hand at the line and went straight into the tracker with a view to to obviously graded hurdles. And uh, Lucinda Russell has won this race, of course, in the past, back in 2014. You mentioned her team of horses are stable form. I think this horse, Haydock, is the type of track that could suit him as well. The ground is... Sli- Look, I have the ground, obviously, at the moment, good to soft. It is due to... We're due a little bit more rain, but I think all in all, I think it's drying out. So this horse won a good to soft ground. I think that's going to suit it. And um, I think that's going to help. And I would definitely think three to one is value. I wouldn't be surprised if it went off close to favourite. So a snap on that one. First leg of the five cast, make sure to get in, of course, the uh, the monthly draw. Uh, monthly champ that VIP which is what we're doing this season on the Thursday shows is next week. So we have a couple that have had two winners or more and that have qualified already, but uh, make sure to get your five cast in first leg. We're going with Primos. It's a unanimous decision at Mr. Groom on race number one at Haydock. The second race, Emmett Mullins, Paul Byrne teaming up, looking for a four timer in what used to be the fixed brush hurdle, Roland. It's obviously a premier handicap over the three miles and a half of furlong. And at the moment, uh, with our sponsors, Boyle Sports, uh, this uh, Slate Lane, who came from the uh, Paul Hennessy Academy, famous, of course, for Greyhounds back in the day. And obviously, heaven help us, has had some nice horses. But this horse is on the up. Very much so. I'd say the old red sirens are going off in the bookies when they saw this entered and they were pricing this up anti-post. Um, you know, obviously progressed significantly for Emmett uh, won three times. It comes here. Um, he's had a few goes. As he had a go with this race down the year, there was a massive gamble that didn't land for Emmett. So it's a race he's targeting himself and Paul Byrne, uh, obviously well known for as a shrewd character in racing. Um, so I would yep. respect him. I think the juice has gone out of any sort of price. Whether there was any juice there at all, considering he's so conservatively priced, um, I'd say I uh, don't know. So he's never really a betting proposition, I suppose. Well, fourteen pounds running he got just just uh, just to, to to explain to our listeners, he got fourteen pounds for winning that uh, on his most recent outing. Tommy Bow uh, was second, has since come out and won twice. So the form is working out really really strong. Um, I like the profile of the horse for this. Would would you be plowing into that sort of price? Uh, perhaps not. I thought one at a bigger price. Nicky Henderson is absolutely flying it at the moment. The horse has been running well. I think there could be more to come. Bold endeavour, especially on this type of ground, with the ground drying out, I think will help. And could be unexposed over this type of trip. I thought if there was one to be one to run well at a bigger price, I thought Bold Endeavour, uh, James Bone is booked for the right. Nicky has two entries up at Haydock at the weekend and stable is absolutely flying. So I suppose an each way selection in the race. I thought that could maybe go well given conditions. And just to note as well, Ronan, on this particular race, there doesn't appear to be uh, much pace in the race. I think that's an angle that, if you're looking at Bold Endeavour, he does like to be up there in the van and uh, could get an easy enough time of things up, up front. And I think the track suits front runners. Yeah, I think his form is pretty solid as well, Bold Endeavour. He's pretty consistent, sort of. I was looking at him because I don't actually think it's the best renewal of the race. I, I, I was looking at Lord Snooty and I just thought I'd found one in the in the market. I just thought, uh, he, I looked back at his Galway run the last day and he made a clangor of a mistake there at second last. And I just thought, I, I just could be one. He has a bit of form at Punchestown. And then I just mm. looked at his price and he's been priced up right, you know, Probably He's been well backed, Rory. He was one of the best backed yeah. horses in the race. 
Yeah, so I, I actually probably late coming to the race, didn't see the anti-post bet, and I don't like to look at the betting beforehand anyway. I tried to form my own market or where horses should be in, in the head. I think that helps. But uh, I just didn't think. I thought he might be a 16-1 to 1 shot, and I, I come up here and look like some sort of wise guy tipping him up. So I'm not going to be back at him at uh, at 8-1. to 1. I, I have a couple against the field. The Santos Blue, this... Uh, Dan Skelton horse. I don't know anything about the rider, uh, Mr. Ben Sutton. I know he dropped his whip last day out behind Crambo, which probably wasn't ideal. So I'd like him to keep his whip in his hand this time, especially if I'm going to back the horse. But I've no problem with him riding the horse. I heard people give out about this sort of stuff all the time. You, you know what you get. He's obviously a pretty inexperienced rider, but he has partnered this horse to win a couple of times. He's really progressive last season. And I thought that was a decent enough run first time up uh, in behind Crambo. And just on a line through Crambo, who is obviously favourite here? Like he he's, he doesn't have much to find and pretty progressive horse himself. And the other one I liked is Waku, uh, Nick Alexander's horse, uh, first time visor. Like it's back. He, he has course and distance winning form. He won a Grade Two. He beat uh, Itchy Feet here in a Grade Two last season. Like uh, rule out. He might be just a big price because he was sixth there when he was seven or four favourite air. Like that race was. I think he got a bad ride there, but then he. Danny McMenamin was out the back in a slowly run race, ridden confidently, and just couldn't get into the race when they quickened up. They finished off real fast. I looked at the sectionals there, they were off. The winner was coming home 110% uh, for his section for his last uh, closing speed, uh, his last four furlongs. So they, they're quickening up there, and he was just in the wrong place. So I would rule that race out, and I'd take a chance at him. He's 33 to 1, I think. So uh, two, two big prices, because I'm just not convinced this is a, a vintage renewal. And if we had to force you for the five guest? Uh, I'll, I'll go with the bigger one, the Wakul. The, the course and distance form will do for me. Super. I think I might mute myself there once again, Rona Groom, but uh, we are... Stunned. I suppose, look, Stunned with that 33 to 1 shot. Well, yeah, look, I suppose, look, wouldn't put you off in a race like this, and we've had some big price winners of the... Uh, Keep calling it the fixed brush hurdle. That's not that anymore. But um, slate lane, very, very interesting. Obviously, a good to soft ground, 100% record on a four timer. Um, but just at the price of that ball endeavor, there could be more to come. And um, with the ground drying out, I think it certainly will suit him. So, going to play that for the five cast. Uh, let's crack on, Mr. Groom. We're going to look ahead to the feature on, of course, uh, Haydock's card on Saturday. And Harry Cobb, then he's not in town. He's gone to Ascot for five rides. Has he made the wrong decision? I think he might have run him. I don't know. Um, has he made the decision? Is, 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 is it his decision to make? And I have absolutely no problem with that at all. I mean, these jockeys, these 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 uh, jockeys riding for the big yards, like it's a closed shop, as we know. And uh, I have absolutely no problem with They're a very privileged position, like Townend and Cobden. And and if if the, Paul Nichols wants him to go to Ascot for five rides, where he thinks you know that's the place where he wants him, where he might make a difference on one of them, you know, then off you go, Cobden, down down the road to Ascot, because uh, you're you're getting to ride these brilliant horses, and he'll be back on Brave Man's game as as Nichols has stressed this week. It was a late kind of swerve. Is it for, real? Think, is, is, it, is 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 he? You know, Paul Nichols is a big uh, Manchester United fan. Is it what people are saying about Ten Hag? Is it laptop management? Yeah, perhaps it is, but if if Paul Nichols says go on down to Ascot, then off you go, and that's it. You know, like like he'll be back on Brave Man's game as Paul Nichols has stressed or this like, has had to answer a load of times this season and this uh, week, uh, getting asked to race. You can see he's getting a bit agitated by it, and I can kind of see where he's coming from. So I don't have any problem with this at all. I believe this was a late kind of decision as well, because when we were talking about this race, remember a couple of weeks ago on the road to Cheltenham. You know, we were kind of thinking this is Protectorat's race to lose. It's going to cut up badly. Mm -hmm. There was no real chat of Brave Man's game coming here, and now he is coming here. So uh, that kind of segues me into the race. Is uh, I prefer Protectorat here. I have to say, I think that he'll be off for his life here. This is if if, if Dan Skelton um, thinks he can win a Grade One with with, with Protectorat this season, it has to be this race. He was really impressive in the race last season. And I'm just looking back at the role of honor. Like this is full of uh, dual winners, triple winners, even four-time winners. Obviously, with uh, Cotto Star, Bristol the May Q card. You know, uh, this is a race that uh, is a specialised track. I know it's not as heavy as it as it usually is, but I can see Protector at being uh, ready to run for his life here. And Brave Man's game, it's a bit of an afterthought. It's it's the owner. It seems to be the owner's decision, and not quite Nichols uh, just kind of going along with that. I believe the horse as well, etc. But 
in the match, I'd probably go with Protectorat. Well, I wasn't expecting Brave Man's game to run. I have to say that first and foremost. You say it's a, it's an afterthought, but as I was looking at over the last couple of seasons, is it actually quite smart from Paul Nichols to run to, to run Brave Man's game in this because um, his his form in the first part of the season over the last you know three seasons has been better. Now, I love the fact that he did hold his form last year into the spring. In fairness to him, he ran an absolute cracker at Cheltenham and Punchestown, which, you know, his form did tail off in the spring, I suppose, prior, uh, the, the, the seasons prior. So I have to say, looking at the race on paper and looking at his run the last day, I mean, for me, I think there was every chance he would have won the race if he didn't clout the last. He was travelling the best horse coming down. He does that anyway. Um and he just made that mistake, which was so unlike him at the last fence. And I think it took a lot out of him. And, um, you know, if he wins that and he comes straight here, what price does, what price is he? He's, he's definitely long. What he's, he's, he's a good odds on price, I think. Protectorat, he disappointed me at the back end of last season. He had win surgery. He was obviously primed for this race last year. He comes here, goes well fresh. Paul Nichols hasn't won this, would you believe, Ronald Groom? The, we're talking about the Betfair chase. He hasn't won it since 2014, but he hasn't won it seven times in the past. Um, listening to Daryl Jacob, obviously very excited to get the ride. Why wouldn't he be? And I think the race could be run to see what I think. Looking at this race, I'm, you're trying to find an angle sometimes, but sometimes it's, it's staring you in the face. And I think this week, Brave Man's Game, at even money, anything around that price, I think is a very good price. He's six pounds clear on ratings. He's only an eight-year-old. His form in the first half of the season has been brilliant uh, over the last couple of seasons. And But for the mistake, I think at the last, as we said, you know, he, he's coming here off the back of a win and the drowning ground is going to help him as well. So I think he might get his own way up front. Um, he might get an easier sort of lead, which will help him. He didn't get that at Weatherby with the likes of a high senior. And obviously, gentleman's game came up sides uh, to really put pressure late on in the race. So I'm going to side with Brave Man's game, and I think um, I think he'll take a lot of whacking in this. That's fair enough. I mean, he's, he's a better horse than Protector at on the day. I just think um, it's it's a training kind of style, or, or you're listening to the trainers. I think Dan Skelton has probably targeted this race all, all, all summer, even, and uh, Brave Man's game is coming here late. Maybe it make make no difference at all. Uh, for for the record, I probably won't have a bet on the race, to be honest. Um, I, I, quick mention for the other two, Cora Gramler and Royal Pagai. Obviously, Cora Gramler disappointed first time out, but we were talking about him as a possible Gold Cup contender earlier in the season. Maybe he can bounce back and run a bit better here. Wouldn't strike me as the, the ideal course for him. And Royal Pagai obviously has a good record here. His first time out and probably want the ground a bit softer. So an intriguing race all around and uh, looking forward to seeing it. It's brilliant that Brave Man game, Brave Man's game actually does go to the race because I think we always kind of thought that Chishkin wouldn't and that race would have really cut up badly if he didn't. So it's it's a race, it certainly is. And um, yeah, an absolute cracker. We'll be speaking to uh, JJ Slevin, our special guest on the show, building up to Punchestown later on in the show. And we'll also be looking ahead to the, uh, of course, the Ascot Hurdle next. And that will be after this. Gorn Park Racecourse, the premier racetrack in the southeast of Ireland, is located on the outskirts of Kilkenny City. Gorn is your number one choice for corporate days out, stag and hint party events, and an overall great local racing experience. Known as the race that stops the county, the famous Goffs Diestes Chase 2024 takes place on Thursday, the 25th of January. And the finish of the Goffs Diestes, invitation only, and Ruby Walsh on the near side for Willie Mullins' seventh win of the race. Invitation only has paid now for his own With packed crowds expected once again this January, you can book your early bird tickets online today. Visit gorenpark.ie online, click the link in the champ.ie podcast video description, or scan the QR code on screen to purchase right now. Eddie and the team look forward to welcoming you all to Gorham Park Racecourse this winter. Yes, and we've Ascot to look at next before moving on to Punchestown. Ascot, obviously we mentioned Harry Cobb that he's five rides on the card and it's uh, certainly an absolute cracking card to look forward to once again uh, this weekend with uh, the Ascot Hurdle 205, the feature. Goshen, the old enigma, 
uh, currently priced up at the uh, top of the market. That is your favourite. And um, with some of their sponsors, uh, Boyle Sports said uh, two to one. Teeter Go- uh, Glory priced up at eleven to four. Score Oil is uh, a nine to two chance. Blue King Doro is the mount of uh, Paul Nichols. Uh, is the mount of Harry Cobden? Should I say for Paul Nichols, eleven to two and strong leader. Not totally out of this, Ronan has had the benefit of a run, eleven to two for Ollie Murphy. What did you make of it? Uh, I find it an absolute rotten race to to try and take apart. Um, Goshen, uh, <laughs> not not what you want to hear. Uh, but uh, he's uh, Goshen, obviously, like a, a good horse around Ascot, um, and uh, ran right up to form when we last seen him behind Napper's Hill at, at Sandown. Probably as good as he is, but was uh, pretty poor now in the Cesare, which which wouldn't wouldn't really uh, give you much confidence. Um, so Royal. A horse I've loved through his career, it's showing signs of uh, just just regression. I suppose uh, in this Kempton race that he usually goes well in, uh, he was uh, well held there by Rubo. Theodore Glory here coming first time out the mare. Um, she gets the allowance. Uh, she has some nice form last season. Obviously ran okay in the mare's hurdle. But three to one, you're getting to ask to take around her around that sort of mark. Blue King de Rose, a four a four year old, and as you said, strong leader as well. Probably not out of it, just as uh, you know, you're 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 ruling out, and you you get down to him. I don't have a strong betting opinion at all. I, I will 100 percent not be having a, a bet in the race. Um, uh going to head for the five cast purposes, I might take a. a a chance that Goshen can get it done uh, back at Ascot, but uh, not 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 a, a very tentative vote, Basil. I'm afraid. Get your selections down below. Solve the enigma. Can Goshen come back and uh, win at Ascot at the weekend, or have you found something else? That's uh, race number four on the five cast. But I think it's time, Ronan Groom, to hear from our special guest on the show this week. It's uh, none other than JJ Slevin. Plenty of graded success last year, and of course. Uh, a great character as well from County Wexford. Let's hear the thoughts of JJ. We're delighted to be joined on the Champ the podcast by JJ Slevin. Looking ahead to what's a very busy weekend and, of course, national hunt season. JJ, great to have you on the show. 44 winners last year. You must have been delighted with that. Yeah, thanks for having me on, lads. Um, yeah, sure. I was happy with last season. I got a good run at it and uh, that was my best year ever. So, trying to better this year is the thing now that was in the past and uh, we're looking forward now you know I suppose as one of the more established national hunt jockeys in the Irish weighing room I suppose the first question to ask JJ is maybe give us an insight to where it all began for you yeah so obviously I'm uh, I'm from Wexford so my uh, mother and father uh, always had horses grown up along and uh, I suppose my myself and my brother and my cousin uh Tomas O'Brien, we would always been riding ponies and started from there, I suppose. Um, from a very young age, I always wanted to ride horses, really. So Joseph has been massive. Um, look at him, very lucky. I've, I'm with Joseph probably, I'm not actually sure, but stuff eight years or in around there now. Um, look at I went there, I was claiming seven and just turned professional with Joseph. I had ridden probably 11 winners uh, on the track before I uh, turned, like so. Joseph gave me a big leg up now, in fairness to him, and uh, I, I wouldn't like to think where I'd be without him, really, you know. And I suppose uh, a Wexford man going in to ride out in County Kilkenny most mornings, how, how does that How does that work? Yeah, sure, look at, uh, there's a few, there's a few diehard Kilkenny people in there, uh, although Pilltown is a funny location, as in, you can see three counties from the top of the hill, you can see Waterford, Kilkenny, and obviously Tipperary, and, uh, yeah, there's a few diehard Kilkenny people. Tom Dial, probably ex jockey, he he would be among the uh, main GA men in there anyway. Yeah. Of all the success that you've had in the saddle to date, what were the main ones? I suppose that stood out for you. A couple of big days last year in particular. Yeah, uh, I suppose you're back a long winning uh, band of outlaws was a big one for Joseph and Cheltenham. You know, to get a Cheltenham festival winner for Joseph was massive. Uh, the Irish National was a big one as well. Again, a race that you would have grown up watching as a young lad all the way. You'd be looking forward to watching a race like an Irish National. So to win that was big. And so last season, I was very lucky. Uh, got a couple of great one winners. I was, you know, home by the Lee and uh, Bambridge and obviously faster, slow. So 
but I was lucky, you know. Yeah, super. And I suppose good place to start, isn't it? Fast or slow. Grade one winner at the Punchestown Festival um, last year, uh, JJ. And so, were you surprised how how much he achieved at the back end of last year in the spring? Yeah, I sure suppose it was probably hard to see that sort of improvement coming out and uh, being all honest, really. But uh, Horsett was on an upward curve all along. Uh, he was very difficult to place last season. I suppose he was literally a novice. He'd, he'd run once over fences in France and won, which meant that he lost his novice status. So he had to start off in the John Durkin last year and then he had to go on then over two mile at Christmas and then he went on to Cheltenham and ran a great race just to be beaten by Corek Rambler and we felt that, we felt coming out of Cheltenham that he would improve again and obviously had to improve going to uh, going to Punchestown and you know he, he, he beat a few good horses there you know. Yeah he certainly did and I suppose what about Martin's patient approach he's certainly given this horse plenty of time. Yeah, uh, sure. Martin's record speaks for itself. A brilliant trainer. Um, you know, Martin, the, the amount of, I think I heard him saying one day he came to the car in, in like 1977, I think. So the amount of experience he has is unbelievable. And uh, when, he, when he has that build up of experience to uh, back up on, he, he doesn't usually uh, get it wrong, you know. You mentioned the, the horse, obviously, last year started off in the John Dark, and that's. You know, he's entered up for, for the weekend again. How has his uh, prepar- preparation in particular uh, gone for, for this year's reappearance? Yeah, look at all. It seems all systems go. He's got a very uh, smooth run at it. And uh, his weight, I think, seems pretty good. So, look at this all systems go. And I suppose, the, the, you know, maybe the ground was probably a little bit of an unknown. He, he's never really ran on, you know, as deep a ground maybe. But... Uh, Look, you hope he's going to handle it, so we'll just have to see what happens, really. And he's had an away day. It was uh, good shots coming in from Punchestown. Yeah, yeah, he got a gallop around there, Punchestown after race the other day. It was quite good for his head. I think he went there and had a nice, enjoyable experience and came out there a happy horse. So, um, yeah, look, he seems to be in a good place. Anyway. What type of a character is he and what do you think is his biggest asset? Yeah, no, look, at it. I think he's a pretty straightforward horse. He just... He's uh, just gets into his old rhythm of galloping there, and the way he goes, really, it's just he's just got a lot of natural ability to gallop, and uh, he seems to be well able to handle the occasion. In fairness to him as well, and uh, I think he's uh, he's just a classy horse, and that's all his biggest attribute is. He's he's just very good. He's able to travel and jump, and finds finds going hard in a good race. He's able to find that easy, you know. And at the business end of the races in the spring in particular, obviously the ultimate, which has worked out really, really strong, and at Punchestown, his jumping at the latter part of the race was was very, very good indeed. Yeah, look at Touchwood. He, he is a very sound jumper and he's quite quick through the air. So obviously he came from France. The, the horses that come out of France get a great grounding. And um, yeah, look, so he's a pretty solid horse. And the form of the ultimate, you mentioned Cora Grambler, for example. Obviously he's come out and... And won the, the Grand National, so the form is working out really, really strong. The dream is still alive, I suppose. Do you believe he's a, a genuine Gold Cup contender? <coughs> Look, at this at this point of play, he'd be hoping he would be a, a strong contender for a Gold Cup. Um, people have been saying that, you know, the horses last year were tired, and it's, I know a Gold Cup is a grueling race. It's a very, very hard race, and uh, possibly they were, but your time is going to tell now whether they were or they weren't in. Look, at I'm hoping fast or slow is still on the upgrade. I, I'm hoping there's still a bit of improvement there. Um, he hasn't, you know, he, he's never got a real grueler of a race and I think that'll stand to him in good stead, you know, as going forward for this season anyway. Obviously in the same silks, entered up over the weekend, second in the Carl Cup last year, Cheltenham. How has an epic song's schooling gone over fences? Yeah, he seems to be taken to quite well. Fine big horse, two big scopy horse. Um, yeah, looking forward to getting him out now and see what he can do over fences. Um, hopefully, he just gets a nice experience into him. We don't want him getting the fright around in the first day, so we're no, looking forward to him. And <coughs> do you reckon he can follow in the footsteps of uh, faster, slow as a novice chaser this year? Yeah, hopefully. If you look at um, time will tell you never know how a horse is going to take the fences, but um, he's in good shape, so hopefully, he'll run well. Tyeste's chase winner from 2022, obviously Longhouse Poet, uh, entered up over the weekend, this time over hurdles. How is he, JJ? 
yeah, so Longhouse is in great form. Uh, I suppose they're getting the run of the herds into him just to see where he is really and get him started. But uh, look at the, I think the national is the plan again for him. Very talented horse, Longhouse. So he loves entry. So hopefully now he'll get a, a great run the national year before. Unfortunately, he got rid of me at the canal turn. But uh, yeah, he's, a, he's a talented horse, Longhouse. I stick it with Martin's horses, a horse I've had high regard for uh, for quite some time. Obviously, he was uh, third in a big uh, three mile handicap chase at Christmas uh, last year. Could he go back for it again, Panda Boy? Yeah, I think that's the plan. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's a lovely horse, too. Again, a horse that's that's um, only coming to himself as well. A typical horse of Martin's needs a bit of time to come to himself. and. I think this could be his year, hopefully, and a great run to Paddy Power last year, a great run to the Irish National. So that's the, the Paddy Power's plan again now this year. So hopefully he deserves a big one, you know, so hopefully that could be it. And his sole win over fences, I want to ask you, was on good ground. Do you think he's more effective on good ground or would he be versatile? I think as he's got older, he's, gone, he's become more versatile. He's got a bit stronger, which allows him to handle a bit slower ground. So not as concerned about it as we probably were. But Leopardstown on Christmas, um, the way the track is nowadays, you have a chance to get a nice ground. Moving on to Joseph's horses quickly. Obviously, home by the lane, we've seen him over the weekends. Were you surprised how much <coughs> was he improved and stepped forward last year over the course of the season? Yeah, it was. It was because he had to. He was just a little bit behind the better horses last before last season. And um, he, he, he did definitely come forward, so... A great run the other day, so we'd be hoping going back there Christmas time off level weights, he'd have a decent chance, you know. Banbridge, an absolute star over fences in the novice ranks last year. Grade one winner at entry. How is he doing? Good shape. He's been up to the car a few times. Um, he's going quite well, Banbridge. I sure suppose he ha he's stepping from intermediate division now into the senior division, and uh, we'll have to get him out and to see where he turns up, but uh. All going well. He's, he's a spring horse, I suppose. All going well. He has a nice uh, nice spring campaign ahead of him. Yes, and uh, ground, obviously, last year was probably disappointing, wasn't it, that the conditions went against him at Cheltenham? <coughs> yeah, Joseph done the right thing. Big call to put him out on the morning of the race in Cheltenham, grade one day. Do you think he could be a, a genuine challenger, maybe to Alaho in that uh, intermediate division? If you look at that, that would be the, the dream, I suppose, at Alaho. He's a very, very good horse. Um, he was good in Clonmel again the other day. So here, we once he's look at it, he needs to improve again to take on those sort of horses. But he's gone stronger this year, and there's every chance he might have taken the step up. You know. Yeah, best of luck with him. Nosre is a horse that obviously would have a grade two at Kempton in the spring before finishing fourth uh, behind Lassie Mounts. Uh, of course, it, it, at the back end of the season. Do you think there's still more to come from him, and how is he? Yeah, Nusra is probably not a hundred mile away from a run now either. Obviously, his new new owners, um, loads of speed, a classy, classy flat, a handicapper. Mikey Sheet is in for ride of the year on him, yeah, for winning him in the Curra one day. So, <coughs> very good horse. I can see Nusra even you know being a chaser maybe next season, but the horse obviously takes a bit of ride. And Darl got on well with him last season too. Won a few on him, but. Um, yeah, speedy horse. Another another horse probably you're not gonna find him out on a real wet day, real wet ground, but could be a horse for Leperson at Christmas maybe. Fakir do dairy quickly, how is he? Yeah, no, Fakir's in great shape. Um look at I was lucky to slot in there when Mark was injured last year. Won a King Lock Bray on him, rode him in, in entry, but I rode him in, in Ascot, sorry, and then he's second in entry, but very, very solid horse. These all great horses. He's been around there for a while now, and um, look, he's getting older, so hopefully he can still re retain some of his ability, you know. Is there any younger horses worth following for Champion e listeners this season? Yeah, sure. Joseph has a few, we have a few juvenile horses there, juvenile hurlers, obviously. Um, we have a few there for. Simon and Isaac horse called Intelletto is a nice sort of horse. He's not a hundred mile away from starting off. There's another there's another Gigginson horse called Heart centered up there. So they're two that might be worth looking at. There, there should be actually Norbering, I think Norbering is, is not a bad horse. He should be two from two. Sure it's kicked about in um the stall. He he's been gelded and 
he's not a bad horse, I'd say. He likes testing ground, does he? Yeah, he's a bit of class too, a high class flat horse. When he was a coat, he's a bit of a bio. So they've gelded him there now and his own mind might be a bit more focused and uh, he gave that mare, I know Garden's mare probably improved, but he gave her £13 pound in the store, so it's interesting to see where he starts in now. A couple that caught the eye lark in the morning and uh, trust your instincts. What can you tell us about them? Yeah, lark in the morning has an entry. Um, you know, he's, I think he's quite a nice sort of horse, probably a horse for the spring, wants a bit of night nice around maybe, but looking forward to getting him out and seeing what he can do. Um, trust your instinct. <coughs> I actually, yeah, I actually schooled him in the morning. Very high class flat horse. He's been schooling away well, but um, look, at, he's probably a little, little bit behind the others, and he, he won't be out as soon as them, I'd imagine. Let's start with the John Durkin before uh, talking about the rest of the uh, cards on Saturday and Sunday. The John Durkin on Sunday, we, as we're recording, we don't have entries or declarations, should I say? We've we've entries, but we don't decks uh, for Sunday. But it's apparent, obviously, fast or slow uh, will take his place in the lineup against the Gallop on uh, the Champ, who won the race last year. And two to five at the top of the market, I suppose. Look over this type of trip. It looks. Is it a penalty kick? Uh, I don't think so. No, I've actually backed fast or slow. I backed him earlier. I wrote a preview for this week earlier in the week. I backed him at eleven to two. I wouldn't put anyone back off backing him now at around the nine to two, four to one mark. I like him a lot. Um, I guess where do you start with him? His defeat of Gallop and Deschamps. At Punchestown, you could describe that as a Punchestowny type of a run. Uh, you know, the Gold Cup winner coming back and, and, and underperforming there, but he still be Brave Man's game as well. So you have to ask, how much did the two of them underperform together, and did they both underform to the same degree? Because uh, it was a big old win from Faster Slow. He came in there cruising into the straight, and he went away from them. And I thought it was a big performance. And don't forget, he obviously ran second at Cheltenham as well, and in, in the handicap there, the ultimate to the subsequent Grand National winner. So it was a big run there. Like, look at this horse. He's been so hard to place all his career, basically because when he was a three or four year old in France, they ran him in a two hurdles and one fence, and he won both of them. So basically, he's rid of his novice status over hurdles and over fences. So he's been like, he's been so hard to place for Martin Brazel. And yes, he still managed to nearly just about, uh, he nearly come close to winning like a, a Coral Cup. And he's just about come close to winning uh, Ultima as well. And then got his day in the sun in the grade one. And he's essentially a set, like he's essentially that was winning that as a novice because he had only had one run over fences in France when he was a young horse. So he's essentially a second season horse now with only five starts to his name over fences. I think he has to improve. And can we say Gallop and Deschamps is improving? Probably not because he got to such a stealthy standard last season. So the question you have to ask is, can he get back to that level? And it's probably very unlikely that he is going to be at that level right now in this race. Can he still win? Of course he can. He's an absolute class act. And £10 below his best, he could still beat uh, Faster Slow here if Faster Slow isn't improving. And he's probably coming on for his first run. But with a view to the season ahead, Basil, I'm not so sure. And I'm always willing to 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 to, to kind of fade the, uh, the, 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 sub, the, the, the Gold Cup winner coming back. Because, you know, for every album photo and best mate, there's a kicking king and a war of attrition. Um you know, or a sizing John, as in these seven-year-old winners of the Gold Cup that you think, oh, he's going to go on and win win two or three more, but it's just not that hard. And he went to the well last season in the Gold Cup, Gallop and Deschamps. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I want to see him run back to to see to 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 see what sort of effect that race had on him. You could argue Brave Man's game might have to bit a bit to prove after that as well after his run at Weatherby. So I'm willing to take a chance on faster slow here. And uh, with, a, with a view to the future as well, I think he's live in the Gold Cup. So uh, looking forward to seeing what he can do. He certainly is live in the Gold Cup. And I, I have to say that, do I think over two miles, three furlongs at, at Punchestown, he put up a better performance than he did last year in the John Dirk? And I, I do. I think he'll certainly close the gap. Um, but but Gallop and the Champ over this type of distance, as we've seen, can be very, very effective and was, was a good winner of the race last year. Fast or slow, what an improving type. And I don't think it was a fluke at Punchestown. Um, even if, you know, Gallop and the Champ are brave man's game, I think they've run close to close to top level there. And fast or slow, you know, people are talking about the hard run in the 
in the Gold Cup for the likes of, you know, obviously the two that we've mentioned. But what about fast or slow? I mean, he's running the Ultima. I mean, that's a tough race, tough handicap. And, and you know, he's going to run an absolute cracker. And the further in that race, excuse the cliche, but the further he was going, the better he was getting. You know, up that hill, he stormed up the hill. And I think stepping up and tripping another furlong on the new course on the Friday at Cheltenham. I think he's, I definitely think he's a very live contender for the Gold Cup. I think he's top quality. And the form has obviously worked out very well of the Ultima. Um, not, uh, the, what would you say, not the most sexiest um, route to a Gold Cup winning an Ultima coming back the following year and and shaping up into a Gold Cup horse. But um, I don't think we can afford to be snobs on this because I think Martin Brazel is an absolute genius in terms of a trainer and bringing this horse to the boil slowly. And I spoke to JJ about that, um, you know, how, how patient he's been with the horse. And I don't think that's... I don't think you can underestimate that, you know, and, and he hasn't had, as JJ said, a grueling race uh, to this point in his career. And I thought he was full value for the victory uh, in that, uh, of course, in that grade one at Punchestown. So uh, with a view to Gold Cups, uh, I think fast or slow, definitely. Would I want to be backing him this weekend at four to one over this type of trip? His jumping is very, very good. And his jumping is very solid throughout his races. But I thought in particular, the speed in which he jumped at the business end of those races in the spring was very, very good. And he's a doubt, he, you know, he's a proper stayer and no issues with the trip. Whereas we did this time last year, we were questioning would Gallop and the Champs stay three mile too far long. This is the John Durkin, though. And, um, you know, we're talking Gold Cups. So I think he's both of these horses are, are, are very good, are very live Gold Cup contenders again this year. Um, for this weekend, if it was to put one into the five, five cast and play it safe, I think Gallop and the Champs might just have the edge on fast or slow this weekend. Would it surprise me if fast or slow beat him? No. And I think he's a very live horse for the Gold Cup. In terms of other horses, don't laugh for on a groom, but I wouldn't be surprised if Bull Lord has declared that he runs a very good race in this, over this type of trip. He was very good last year on his first start of the season. Um, he can be quite good fresh. He's very good at this time of year. And on that type of ground, I think he could run, outrun his odds, shall we say, uh, Blue Lord. And he's a horse that we've been very fond of on the podcast and let us down in the spring on a couple of occasions. But would it surprise you if you ran a, a, a big race in this? No, absolutely not. Uh, I think we, we, you always a fan of him going up and trip as well. So um, there's a few where else in there appreciated as well. You, you, you can make a case for him um, running a better race. I was looking at... Uh, did we have a question on uh, the road to Cheltenham there? Um Someone asked if Alaho didn't run in the Ryanair, who where who was Willie's big hope for it? And I was I went scrolling through the market, and, and the first one I came to was appreciate a, a, a fifty to one poke. Like I just thought it was quite interesting, considering the the the, the high regard they hold that horse in down at consultant. It didn't happen for him. It was found out a couple of times at Grade One level last season. I get it, but would it be complete surprise that he developed into a nice horse this season? Um, no, not it was so uh, interesting to see how he runs. Cracking little race, I have to say. So, uh, and, and in line with the the general racing at Punchdown this weekend, which we will get stuck into now, I'm sure. So, very positive mentions for fast or slow. Five cast them going this weekend, Gallop and the Champ. But long term, I think fast or slow. I think we'll uphold that form from Punchdown last year. And you're exciting with for the weekend. Fast or slow, yeah, I'm happy. Happy to take him on. Fast or slow. Okay, well, best of luck and make sure to get your final leg of the five cast. Of course, next week's draw to qualify, you must have two winners or more in the five cast uh, this week. And make sure if you haven't subscribed already to the channel, uh, please do so. Helps us and liking the video helps also and uh, helps uh, content to be racing content to be seen by the wider audience. So thank you very much for that. Right, Ronan, let's talk punches time. We've lots uh, more to discuss. Anything else stick out? Of course, we do have that Florida Burn novices chase. Looks a cracker on Saturday. And I, I believe you like one in here. Yeah, I like a few of Punch Sound. So I'll, I'll, I'll quickly reel through them. Um, uh, for, starting with that race, which is a cracker. This this race has uh, actually, it used to be two, six and a half. And they've they've gone up to the three miles here, which I'm sure will suit the likes of Flooring Power or Afferdale Fury, Favori de Champ do. But I like the Sandor Clagen for Paul Nolan. Uh, I really uh, thought he was good on his on his debut over an inadequate two miles. Jumped quite well there, maybe a bit to his left late on. He was fourth behind Imagine. 
uh, but completely inadequate trip for him, considering he was doing all his best work over the likes of two six last season in the Nathaniel Lacey and then over, obviously over in Cheltenham and the Albert Bartha. So I'm sure he's going to improve a lot for this step up to three miles. And Paul Nolan has had this race, <clears throat> excuse me, earmarked for him from a long way out, considering his record at Punchestown. He got three wins from four starts there. So I really like him on the heavy ground. Uh, do you want to come in here, Basil, or will I kick on with the other horses that I like at Punchestown? Well, I liked Aphrodel Fury in that. I mean, he ran an absolute massive race, didn't he, in the Bartlett last year? Maybe not getting the, the the full credit that he deserved. I loved his win in particular, actually, early on in the season over Novice Hurdles um, up at Galway. Came up the hill really, really strongly. And um, I think Noel Mead was, when we spoke to him on the show last year, was 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 adamant that this horse was going to be some chaser this year now. And um, speak people are speaking National Hunt chase for him long term. I think he's enough class for the, the Brown Advisory, personally. I think uh, on that... Um, old course over three miles. I think he's plenty of toe. And for this race, uh, I think it's certainly very, very competitive, but he's had the benefit of the run, of course, and uh, won just 27 days ago. I thought he he, he impressed. I thought he jumped well. And I think this, uh, given the size of him, I think there's going to be more to come from him. So I'm starting with the five-year-old in this, uh, Aphrodel Fury and uh, Florian Porter. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him back over hurdles. Yeah. Uh, eventually, yeah, that could easily happen. Um, later on that old Punchestown card, I really like this Ha Door for Willie. Um, I've been just waiting for this horse to reappear. I think he's very well handicapped off a mark of 142. Go back to his seasonal debut, uh, last season, he beat a horse called the Goffer at Fairy House. He absolutely hammered him. Uh, and I think the season debut is the, t- is the time to get him. He was in that great two chase up at Down Royal, Willie didn't declare him there. But he's in here tomorrow off a mark of 142, and he was hammered off, hammered um, in the betting to win off that mark at the Punchstown Festival when he fell. Uh, I think he fell pretty early in that race, so didn't get to see him there. Jack Foley is riding him here, and Danny Mullins is on adamantly chosen. Uh, Paul Townend actually doesn't have a ride in the race, which is quite interesting. So I think, I'm hoping that the book, whenever this is priced up, uh, these bookmakers like uh, put them out a bit or, 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 or take those jockey bookings into account because... I, I really like him. I think he could be well handicapped. Uh, Coccolino was quite interesting in that race last year. Uh, go back and have a look at his last run over in an adequate two miles. I think he was creeping into that race and I think he could be a well handicapped McManus horse going forward. Um, I suppose we should talk quickly about the more Guiana. Uh, Stateman uh, should obviously get off to a winning start. Uh, I think he's pretty rock solid uh, against the likes of Echoes and Rain there. I think he should win easily, but he never seems to win by much more than four or five lengths. So he'll probably just get it done again. And I wonder, the state man running here in Perry Pass goes to Hatton's Grace next week. And I wonder, obviously, will he want to keep them apart all season? Will in Perry Pass now go to Kempton a la Fahin in the kind of 2005-2016 seasons? when he went over there to avoid running against Hurricane Fly, will we see him Perry Pass now run against um, Constitution Hill at Kempton on St. Stephen's Day? So just, just a little pondering there I had. Uh, I'll quickly mention a couple of others. Uh, Walhan, I like him, the 308 at Punchestown. I think he could be well handicapped horse for Kira Murphy. Um, he won on the flat at Dundalk last time and his third in a Galway novice hurdle is really good form. He was third there to Stuzakini and... He was third there, Stozakini and a horse called Sequestered, uh, and he had good horses in behind him, like some mint boy and free flowing. So I think he could be well handicapped off a mark of 119. Uh, so keep an eye on him in the 308. And to, on the Sunday at Punchstown, the old Per Thames qualifier, I think the first of the season in Ireland. I think there's only two in Ireland, but it's I think it's uh it's a bit far out for horses to or for trainers to be kind of playing a bit of chess with 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 um with their horses with regards to getting qualified. But I do like this Jody Ted. He was down at the bottom of the ways. I think he could be absolutely chucked in off a mark of 114. He won really well over fences last season. And his general form over fences is really good as well. He's in there for Owen Griffin. Uh, and Mark McDonough takes the ride. Uh, I think he could be really well handicapped tomorrow or on Sunday even in the 308. So a uh, couple there to... to, to, to uh, have a look at or avoid, uh, depending on the case I've made for them. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be having a good go on a few then. I, I'm very interested in Gavin Cromwell. Obviously, took the two uh, bumpers. Um, he took the two bumpers up at the Navin Racing Festival. Could he take the bumper on the Sunday um, with the other Mozzie? Could Jerry Hannon and the other Mozzie? 
Um, you could be in line. I think this horse is smart. I think um, Connections quite like the horse and Son of Adamus um, was uh, second by, uh, second, uh, of course, in a bumper at Galway back in in October to uh, Butcher Hollow. But Derek O'Connor rode on that occasion and uh, he could be quite smart. So he's running in the bumper for Gavin Cromwell. He started the season well in that in, in, in those type of races. So um, I think he's one that could go well uh, on Sunday. And um, there was a horse, an interesting horse that won a maiden hurdle at uh, Punchestown's April meeting that runs in a handicap uh, for Jessica Harrington, uh, locally trained, obviously, striking. And as moderate enough on the flat, but I, I thought it was quite impressive in winning at Punchestown in a maiden hurdle. And I thought it could be up to certainly competing with Connor Smithers on board in Saturday's handicap, the 308. It's a novice handicap hurdle, so there's plenty of them, obviously, could be uh, very well handicapped in here. Season reappearance uh, for this striking. It's a course and distance winner, and um, Connor Smithers takes seven off. And ground maybe a slight, slight concern, um, obviously being soft at the moment, um, but I think that's a nice horse. I think it'll certainly be, at the end of the season, I think you'll be looking at a lot higher rating than 118 over hurdles for, for striking. So uh, that's one just to mention. So we've uh, well, it's been in depth uh, preview at the end of the show on Punches Town. Obviously, we don't have decks for, for, for Sunday, so it's kind of difficult there. But I have to say, I am really looking forward uh, to seeing Afford and Fury and Faster Slow in particular in the uh, chasing discipline at Punches Town over the weekend. Quickly, you mentioned in Pere Pa. Could that horse j- just quickly? on Imperial Park, coming in a novice company, can he challenge Constitution Hill this season? Or do you think he will? I'll ask you a question, because take Constitution Hill out, right? Who are you taking? Say Constitution Hill wasn't around. Say he went chasing this year, right? And Stateman and Perry Pad. Like this is a completely hypothetical situation that would never happen because well, he probably would have sent one of them chasing. But say if you had the two of them, who would you take? Stateman or Perry Pad? Well, after the race last year, I would have said Imperial Pa was a model to go down the Arkell route. Um, he looks seen as a fine, big, strapping horse. And uh, I think coming back to two miles over fences, uh, that would have been the way I would have been looking at it anyway, certainly after the mm-hmm. Ballymore. He was so impressive, so impressive uh, in, in that particular contest. But uh, for me, I'd probably take statement. I don't think, he sh- I don't think we saw the real statement um, in the champion hurdle last year. I loved how relaxed he was in his race, obviously, at, at the Dublin Racing Festival. Very, very relaxed individual, like a lamb, wasn't he, when he won uh, the grade one at the Dublin Racing Festival. And I, I just think State Man, another year on, especially in these races in the early part of the season, I'd be siding with him. And Imperial Pat, I think, will be a nice chaser in time. I like State Man as well. And I think it's a microcosm of the type of punter that you are. Um... I like the horse that's been there and done it, and he's won four grade ones last season. I'm not so sure that he underperform. Like that seems to be Paul Townend's uh, feeling from after the race, but uh, in the champion hurdle, I mean, it'd be very coincidental if the one race that he didn't choose to perform or be at his 100 percent best last season was the champion hurdle because he won everything else. I just think he probably got put in his place by Constitution Hill, but I still prefer him over in Perry Pass to get closer to him in the champion hurdle. Um, so. I, I like him. I think he's probably unlucky to be born in the same um, era as Constitution Hill because he did everything else asked of him last season and did it very professionally as well. So looking forward to seeing him now on Saturday. So lots of horse mentioned on this show. The five cast has been complete. Get your five cast down below. But after this, we're going to talk best bets, naps of the weekend and best bets coming right up after this. Gorn Park Racecourse, the premier racetrack in the southeast of Ireland, is located on the outskirts of Kilkenny City. Gorn is your number one choice for corporate days out stag and hen party events and an overall great local racing experience known as the race that stops the county the famous Goffs Diestes Chase 2024 takes place on Thursday the 25th of January and the finish of the Goffs Diestes invitation only and Ruby Walsh on the near side for Willie Mullins 7th win of the race invitation only has beaten out for his own 
With packed crowds expected once again this January, you can book your early bird tickets online today. Visit gorenpark.ie online, click the link in the champ.ie podcast video description, or scan the QR code on screen to purchase right now. Eddie and the team look forward to welcoming you all to Goran Park Racecourse this winter. So it's time for naps of the weekend, Runner Groom. The floor is yours. Nap, first of all, and then... Hador. Hador in the 158 at Punchtown on Saturday. And other bets that you will be having, maximum of three. Jody Ted, 3.08 or 3 o'clock even at Punchtown on Sunday. And I will... I've already backed faster slow, so that's one. And I'll back that wild hand in the 3.08 at Punchtown on Saturday. And I'll probably back Xander Clegan as well. Xander Clegan. Right, I'm going to go nap. I'm going to go Primos, the opening race of the five cast. Um, I think he could be very, very smart. And I see there's nibbles of support once again as we're recording. He's 11 to 4 now at Boyle Sports. So um, I'm not sure who's getting on, but uh, I'm going to go Primos. I think uh, he could be quite smart in that opening. Uh, grade two for Lucinda Russell. And sticking with the Lucinda Russell team, Ronan, and um, there's a horse called Hot Esteem who I think is a very interesting runner on the card at Haydock, on soft ground in the 335. is the final race. It's priced up at 11 to 1, and it's come in from 18 to 1. And Derek Fox takes the ride. Course winner. It's won at the course in the past. It's two pounds lower over fences than his hurdles mark. And I think in truth, Lucinda Russell, you know, last year she probably thought this horse was going to shape up into uh, a graded horse, uh, to be fair. And... Um, the early part of its chasing career hasn't gone to plan, but um, I thought it was an encouraging effort last time behind Houston, Texas, uh, over the extended three mile two on soft ground at Carlisle. It wasn't beaten all that far, finished fifth of 11 and has been dropped two pounds since. And this is his type of ground, Haydox is its track and there's each way support for it already. So 11 to one, I think it could be a lot better uh, than 123 over fences, nicely weighted as well. So I, I got to definitely back that as soon as I get off this stream. Uh, I think 11 to 1 double figure price is more than fair. Uh, as I mentioned, Gavin Cromwell in the bumper once again. Uh, the other Mozzie is a horse that I think will, will, will go well this weekend as well. So uh, that is our bets of the weekend. Let us know your naps and your best bets down below. Uh, but make sure to get the five cast in. Two winners or more qualifies you uh, for next week's uh, VIP prize draw but uh, Ronan are you heading to Punchestown this weekend I'm not heading to Punchestown I'm off to London this weekend for uh, uh, meet up with a few friends etc uh, so looking forward to that and I'll be catching up with all the racing as I go well I just apologise to everyone in advance I'm not sort of sh- I'm not sure what sort of shape I'll be in on Monday uh, and I'm working the early shift as well on Monday I'm heading to Westport uh, on a stag so um yeah, it's a bus of 31 of us heading around uh, the Bronx to the west, uh, down close to the Galway border. So it's going to be a, a long weekend, an enjoyable weekend. And I think uh, Babs in Mary Luke's at three o'clock will have the Betfair on. That's already organised. So uh, looking forward to it. A cracking weekend in store. And um, just a final mention as well, just before we do close up, Roland, on episode number five of the season. Uh, Gorham Park, obviously... Uh, the Tiesta is chase we mentioned at the 25th. Well, you can save 25% if uh, you obviously go onto the website, gornpark.ie, and avail of the early bird offer. So you can scan the QR code up on screen. It'll bring you straight to the website. And once again, thank you very much to our sponsors, Gorn Park Racecourse, Boyle Sports, our betting partner, and syndicates.racing. Look forward to uh, Monday already, Ronan, and uh, we shall see you very, very soon. Best of luck over the weekend in London.